Let's start working on the concept of pricing in Monopoly and we'll do so with these two graphs in this video. In the next video we're gonna work out with the math. So first we have to understand the intuition. Say we have two cases. In one case we charge one price for the entire, mar entire market, in another case we charge two prices because we want to expand the market. And this is how it works. So when we have just one price, let's say we have our demand, right? This green line over here, which has the shape of A minus B times Q. So that's just the regular shape of a line because the demand is a line. Now, recall that as a monopolist, we maximize profit when we charge marginal revenue equals to marginal cost. So the marginal revenue is twice as steep, which is this orange line over here. Assume this is the marginal revenue line. And that's equal to the marginal cost, which is the purple line here. Now, this would be the quantity that we sell on the market. But then the price that we actually charge the consumer has to belong to their willingness to pay. Because recall, we are charging the willingness to pay. So that corresponds to the demand line, which would be this price over here. Now what happens when we when we charge as a monopolist? Well, suppose if we did not charge as a monopolist, suppose we charged when the demand would equal to the marginal cost, when the actual price function would equal to the marginal cost, like it is in a perfect competition, in that case we would we would sell this amount, so we would sell this entire quantity, and recall that the difference between the price, because the price would equal to the marginal cost, and the demand function, this whole triangle would be the consumer surplus in that case. But because this is not the case, we are charging much higher, we are charging this price and the difference between the willingness to pay and the price is only this small triangle. So we are clearly having a smaller consumer surplus, so that is part of the loss. Now, this is the consumer surplus, this was the entire consumer surplus, so we are cl clearly losing part of the consumer surplus, but we're also gaining something. We're also gaining producer surplus for the monopolist because now the monopolist is actually having the following producer surplus. He is having, he is having a higher profit by charging the markup, which is the difference between the price and the marginal cost, and that's becoming the producer surplus for the monopolist. Now, from the entire consumer surplus that we used to have and the consumer surplus that we're having now, we're clearly losing this trapezoid but part of the trapezoid is the producer surplus which is a gain so overall in the market we are losing this blue triangle this is our dead weight loss this is something that we cannot uh, compensate either to consumers or to producers so it's just gone because of there's an inefficiency so to speak when we are selling as a monopolist now let's have a look what would happen if we would charge two prices let's say we would charge a regular price to consumers and we will charge a discount price to consumers, to the consumers who are more price sensitive, because not everyone can afford the prices of the monopolist. But if we do charge also a discount price to several consumers, we're at least selling some more. We're selling to also new potential customers. So this is what happens. Suppose that on our demand curve, we would have the price for the regular consumers and we would sell the following quantity. So, so we'd sell pretty low because the price is high. Now, if we would also charge a discount price, we would expand the sales up to this point. So we would, we would sell more. We would still have the marginal cost. And recall now, recall now that again, there is gonna be there is gonna be a slight loss in consumer surplus. Actually, quite a bit loss in consumer surplus, because if we charged when price equals to marginal cost, this would be the entire consumer surplus of the market. But because we are charging at different prices, we're having this consumer surplus left for the regulars, this consumer surplus left for the discount uh, customers. But at the same time, we're gaining producer surplus because we're having the markup for the regulars and we're having the, this markup for the discount. So we are gaining, we are gaining some producer surplus. The only thing that we are not allocating is this is this triangle over here is this value of the market that is not going neither to consumers nor to producer it's again a dead weight loss and if we look visually this red triangle over here is smaller than the blue triangle over here and i hope this makes intuitive sense because we are charging to different segments of the market we are expanding the market so by definition we are reaching out to more customers we're selling more meaning that more customers are satisfied the producer himself is also more satisfied because he's able to make more money by charging more. So overall, the inefficiency is lower. In other words, the efficiency is higher by being able to offer a discount as well. I hope this makes intuitive sense. In the next video, we're going to see 
what's the math behind the two prices strategy, mainly what's going to be the price charged for each segment.